Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech, and, and this is actually not clickbait. This whole setup cost me under $1,500. However, even the best of systems cannot make you better at the game. But what it can do is it can make it a really fun experience with triple monitors, a gaming PC, and everything you'll need to play both racing games and Flight Simulator for $1,500 or less. So I do really like Flight Simulator, I also love racing games. So my history, you know, I grew up around racing since I was young as like 12, and I've raced throughout the years ever since. So by no surprise, this is centered around racing. However, this part you really don't need. If you add in these elements to um, the system, you're gonna be upwards of like $1,700, $1,800. But what you can get is you can get triple monitors, gaming PC, and what some basic items you'll need for a less than $1,500 flight simulator. Do note, the things I'm not including is going to be the chair and the desk. Those are gonna be off limits because I feel like there's just so much you can do with that. I use a basic lawn chair, always have, um, due to weight, but hopefully as my weight's coming down, I can actually go for a more fun, more comfortable chair. And then I use Ikea desks, they're like 30 bucks, but legs are impossible to find, so you can get the desktop for like 10 bucks or 20 bucks, but the legs are, yeah, good luck. So I'm gonna break down what I spent on everything, how much everything costs, and show you indeed that something like this can be done for less than $1,500. Okay, so let's go over everything in this system. So I have a Ryzen 5 3600. Do note, I happened to get it a few weeks ago, I think it was August 4th or somewhere around that uh, day, and I got this for $160. If you actually look through the historical trend, you can see, yeah, I got it right over in here when it was, a, I, yeah, I got it for $160 right around this area. So I paid a little, about $40 less for that. Uh, the Pure Rock 2 was actually given to me by Be Quiet, but I am going to cost that out here for you. Uh, I did pay this price, $135 for the B550 Pro 4. This is the memory I'm using. I actually paid a little bit more. I paid $74, if I remember correctly. Same price for the SSD. This is gonna be hard. So a 1080 is more or less pretty close to like a 5700 XT, 5700 in that ballpark. So you might have spent a little bit more. I got mine through a B-Stock sale through EVGA probably back in June, water cold edition. So I got that for $300. Uh, the case was also given me by Be Quiet, but you'd spend about 110. Uh, this is the power supply I'm using. I don't need something this big, but I just wanna make sure you guys know this is what I'm using. Uh, the reason why I'm using is I had a 450 watt that I used for a customer. Um, the power supply died, I replaced it with a better 500 watt, sent this to Corsair and they said, oh, well, this is the one we have in stock, so it was an upgrade. This is also gonna be a little tough. So these, I bought three of them and then they went out of stock. Shocker, I probably bought all of them. Long story short, for this particular setup, and do note that I think, yeah, this monitor stand will do up to uh, 24 inches. I wanted something that was 24. I couldn't pass up a deal for new four year warranty, 75 Hertz, free sync, IPS, four millisecond response time monitors. They were $85 a piece through Amazon. That was the business price. Uh, I am very happy with them overall. Um, but yeah, so this, you're probably spending between uh, $85 and $100 if you just want some inexpensive monitors. Do note, I had two problems with them. A, they only had HDMI, so I had to get DisplayPort adapters. These hook into the back of the graphics card and they go to HDMI, so that works fine. Uh, this is the monitor stand that I'm using. It's cheap, it works, it's actually fallen over once, so just keep that in mind. It was relatively easy to assemble. Uh, it says it's good up to 24 inches. My monitor's like six pounds a piece, so that's fine. Um, I, th I think I spent 50 bucks, but you can probably get it for about 45. Um, so do note that. And then the last thing is, is the Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTIS 4. So that's actually what I'm using right now, and that brings the total to 14.29.75. So for less than $1,500, yes, you can actually build yourself a full, you know, basic flight sim, full experience. What you wanna do, cause in cases like Flight Simulator 2020, this doesn't work natively, right click anywhere, go to NVIDIA control panel, uh, and then you'll, I'll move this aside here, you'll click on configure surround 3D, then click uh, span displays the surround and click configure. Now for me, we're actually on my leftmost monitor, so this is the center and that is the right one. So we'll go ahead and hit enable surround. And for me, it turned black, so it should come back in one moment. Give it about usually five seconds or so. 
it'll take to configure. And now everything has actually spanned. Ooh, everything is actually spanned across uh, three monitors now. Um, so what you want to do now is we're going to open Steam. So I'll drag this onto the display that you guys can see now. And we're going to open Flight Simulator 2020. So here's the problem with how this is set up right now. Everything is kind of stretched. So we're going to hit Alt Enter. And we're going to go ahead and hit Window Mode here. Go ahead and drag this over there. Drag that over there. And drag this up. So now it's not nearly as stretched as before. It's not perfect, but this is the way to do it without having everything look all stretched across your screen. So until Flight Simulator actually supports this natively, this is kind of what we have to deal with. So you can kind of see the difference here. See how it's all stretched versus here, and then we'll go more or less full screen and drag this up. So what we'll do is we'll spawn over, um, let's just spawn over Pittsburgh. So we're gonna go ahead and unpause this here. Now you guys are only looking at my center screen. So let's go, what's our current direction here? Oh wow, okay, yeah, we need to go to 2.8, so, so yeah, okay, cool, I can see, you guys see the error on your screen here. Let's just see just how good a whole flight sim system makes you. So I'm a little bit low on altitude for my liking, my speed's fine. So we need to essentially head to 28 left is where I think we're supposed to land. Okay, so, ooh, ooh. so we're currently 2,800 feet, and that is 1,500 feet above sea level. So we'll want to uh, slowly start our descent. So we're not quite where we need to be, but I'm actually going to adjust this out a little bit here. So I'm about, about 1,500 feet above, or 900 feet above right now, so I can start my final turn here. So I'm just see where I'm at. Oh. The only thing I hate is the auto trim settings. As soon as you let go, it trims nose hard down so bad. I mean, I can adjust that. Yeah, my, my trim is like set all the way down. You guys can't see it on your screen, but I'm adjusting it. Okay. Okay, let's pull back a little bit of power. Get us some flaps here. Let's see what our flaps are set to. Okay, there we go. Two levels of flaps. We'll give it a little bit more power. We do want to decrease air speed here. I'm gonna say, yeah, give it a little bit more power. I wanna say stall's probably in that 80 mile an hour range, or 80 or, um, knots, rather. So, we're descending, we're about 1,000 feet, a little bit, ah, uh, no, we're about 1,500 feet still, so, I can probably pull back power a little bit here, since we're descending. So I'm definitely not coming straight on, coming in from an angle, so I don't have, I have not lined up the glide scope, I do not believe here. I should probably do is roll a little bit here that way I'll come straight in get a little bit more power we're a little under 100 I don't want to be under 100 until we're about where we need to be here so I can definitely tell we're too high and how you can tell that is there's white lights right here and there should be two white and two red so we're still a little high so we'll keep that in mind here caution here let's oh yep 
probably should uh, get the landing brake down. There we go. Okay. So we're still a little high. I'm just going to keep it. I'm going to pull a little bit of power back. Uh, these. Oh, now I have the glide scope. Too fast. Let's give a little bit more flaps. Cool. I don't think I'm too fast still. That's what I thought. I want to hover around that 90. Oh, I'm not too fast. Okay. I'll, I'll listen to the computer. All right, so I got one red. We want two red, two white. Perfect. So we're going to hold our angle of attack. A little bit more power. Yeah, see, I knew I was on a verge of a stall. I'm not quite lined up with the center line, too. Right. I am pretty much, yes, I'm fully aware. Clear the nose. Not the best landing by any means. You know, definitely not near this center line, but I will take it. So there we go. Can this make you better flight sim? Probably not, as evidence as that was not a good landing. But it's still a lot of fun. So there we have it. Um, mission accomplished. I'm actually really happy with this setup. Um, obviously, when you factor in like the wheel stand and the steering wheel, if you're looking for more of a racing sim, eh, you're probably a bit closer. I mean, from what I spent, it would be around 1700 The stand was... Um, hundred and then I got the racing wheel and sale at Best Buy for two hundred uh, like two Black Fridays ago. But the hot thing right now is Flight Simulator 2020 and playing across three monitors is pretty cool. You get a I think having these sides, especially on the left hand side, for me is just really nice to be able to see over um, more visual and to me to be honest, I feel like I've gotten better um, because you get better spatial awareness in my opinion. Could very well be wrong and could be all placebo effect, but What's not false about it is it's just a lot more fun. So if you want to buy anything featured in this video, I will try to find, you know, suitable replacements and the direct items in the description below. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike, hit the dislike button. Leave a comment. Get subscribed. Oh, by the way, this runs at about 30 FPS on Flight Sim, which if you saw actually feels fine. Um, but that's it. Uh, oh, if you no, that isn't it. That is not it. Sorry. If you buy anything. I do get small kickbacks that does help me out a lot. So now, this is Steve from Big Head Tech, and I'll see you all later on down the road.